I play the traveller. I play the robber. I play the robber. I was the race. Oh, the please. I was the good nurse. I was the innkeeper. At Fellow, we try to make sure that each child's faith is represented by using the agreed syllabus and we allow children to explore a religion but also we want them to respond as well and their response will be in terms of their own home lives whether that be religious or not. My learning intentions for today's lesson were for the children to listen to a faith story, to find the meaning within the faith story and to relate it to their own lives. So I contacted Neil Poole and asked him to come in and he chose to tell the Good Samaritan. Morning. My name is Neil Paul and I'm a Christian schools worker. My role in visiting schools generally in the run of our Redbridge is to be a friend to the school, to help the school in any way I can with the RE, specifically in Christianity. The Good Samaritan is a story that I particularly like and I feel confident with because I've, I've used it so many times in school situations. So I think it's a good story on many levels and that's the wonderful thing about parables. They do have many levels of understanding and you can unpack them a bit and find different ways of teaching them. Hi. Say good morning. In the first part of the lesson, I introduced Neil Paul to the children and then we started telling the story and inviting the children to come up as actors. After we told the story, we would do some circle time with them and try and explore the story in a deeper way. Should I start, Mr. Bay? I think you should. I think they're ready. They Are you ready? look ready, don't they? Yeah. Well, this story today is a really brilliant story that I love so much. And the reason I love it is because it helps us to understand how we can treat other people. The role of the faith visitor in, in, in RE is extremely important for a whole variety of reasons. Particularly for the younger children, it contextualises the beliefs and the values which are being looked at. It shows that religion is just not an uh, anonymous, amorphous thing. It's located in people's lives. Jesus, one day, is telling a story. So I'm going to tell you a story about Jesus telling a story. Does that sound good? Yeah. Once upon a time, there was a man, a traveller, going from Jerusalem to Jericho. So first thing we need, Mrs Bailey, is someone to be the traveller. Right, let's have Tommy then, shall we? All right, Tommy. OK. Oh, I've met you before, good. haven't I, Tommy? So put your arms in there. It's going to be quite big, because it's a very... Spe oh, oh that, stand in the middle. That. Stand in the middle. Let's have, oh, that looks gorgeous. You look like a traveller. Excellent. Move your arms. I loved it that the children could identify with the story by wearing the costume, the props that I bought in. Each person involved in the story was able to have a, a costume which made them look different from other people and was, uh, enabled them to feel that part. And suddenly, some robbers came and attacked him. Now you have to attack him, but pretend to attack him. And he has to line them, actually grab Is him, take his coat, take his coat off. Because you want take that, his don't you? Coat, take his coat off. Tommy, you lay on the floor, because they really hurt you. And you run off with your, with your coat and all the goods. So you go over that way. Well. Parables are, are very complex stories that have many layers and I think sometimes teachers can perhaps talk about the meaning without allowing the children to explore the parable for themselves. We tackled the difficulty of parables in today's lesson by allowing the children to be part of the story and then allowing them to explore in the circle time what the story might mean for them. And can you remember what the story was about? Who can remember what the story was about? Anybody remember? What happened in... Oh, Billy, you start us off. Um, Jesus. It was a story. It was a story that Jesus told. Well done. You were listening really well, weren't you? Who else was in the story, then? Robbers. Robbers. Everybody remembers the robbers. What did they do to him? They hurt him. They hurt him. And did they take care of him afterwards or just leave him? No. What did they do? Leave him. They just leave, left him on his own. Did they, did they take his clothes? Took his jacket as well? And then he looks up, look up, Tommy, it's just, he looks up and he can see somebody coming. Someone who might help him. Now, we need someone who's going to help him. Here we go, here's the costume. The first, now this person coming along is a priest, so someone like to be a priest? In RE, what you're trying to do when you're using stories for, from any tradition is to say that these stories are important to people in those traditions, but they're almost like treasure chests which can be opened up by people from, from any or, or no tradition uh, and they can find meaning there too. But we must be careful too because we would also want uh, part of the teaching to show this is a particularly significant teaching in that form for people of a Christian background. Oh, what's happened? Someone's got hurt. But it's nothing to do with me. The robbers who did this might still be here. 
I'm going to be attacked if I help. I can't stay. I'm going to have to go. So he carried on walking. He didn't do any help. So he walked past, walked past Tommy, all the way. That's it. Keep going. All the way over there. Excellent. So that was the first person who could have helped, but he didn't stop. Isn't that really sad? It's terrible. He didn't stop and help. I was happy with the version that Neil chose because I think that children, even young children at this age, still need to know key vocabulary within a story. And I think it's very important that children hear traditional stories as well as modern stories. And so I was happy with the words that he chose in terms of Samaritan and priest because I think, you know, children need to understand the context in which those words um, come. And when the priest saw the person, she's, he's thinking, I'm too busy. I can't stop. I've got things I need to do. You walk by this side, keep going over that way, that's right. You're not helping either. Well done, good acting. Long time went by and Tommy looked up and suddenly he saw someone coming. So he wants someone to be the Samaritan. This is the person who does help. You're going to be the Samaritan? Is that all right, miss? Yeah, it's a good idea. Excellent. Now put your arm in there, that's it, excellent. Excellent. Traditionally in Hari, Teachers have been less willing to take the, the stories apart, to dissect them, to play with them because of respect for the faith background from which they come. I think probably now teachers are far better at doing that. And the secret in Ari might be to dissect the story, to come at it, to, to, to unpack its many meanings, but w while still trying to be respectful for the tradition in which it comes. And of course, having a visitor in to the classroom is a, almost like a safeguard for that because they can they can give their own views they can respond to children's and teachers views and that almost yeah, makes the tommy. exercise safer and look at tommy can you look sort of oh poor tommy sad face can you do a sad face oh excellent come right up to him and he helped the traveler get up okay you can stop walking now help tommy get up help him get up up he get tommy and then pretend that he's got cuts on his arms and put some cream on. Can you do that? Put some cream on his arms, on his arms, on his shoulder. Excellent. Give him a drink. Excellent. Give him a, does that feel better, Tommy? Tommy felt so much better and the, the Samaritan didn't just leave him there. He took Tommy to the nearest hotel. We'll pretend this is the hotel where the table is, yeah? So walk over there. Take it slowly because you don't want to hurt him. That's it. Because poor Tommy had nothing left. Okay. And when he got to the hotel, he stopped. And Tommy, you can sit on the floor. You sit, no, 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 stay where you were. That's it, because you're still acting. Sit down on the floor there. This is the hotel, okay? Really, the answer to a parrot boy is not to be afraid of it, not to think you can't touch it, but actually say, hold on, there's a message here. I can adapt this message. I can change the players in it to somebody else, but still keep the message. And I think that's exactly what Jesus did. If he was here now, all those parables would be totally different. You see, the Samaritan didn't think with his head because normally they would be enemies. He thought with his, what's in there? Heart. His heart. Can you say that? He thought with his heart. heart. He had compassion. Can you say compassion? Compassion. Let's get, get it on our faces. Say compassion. Compassion. Stories can be adapted and I think it's really important that you don't tell a story too rigidly and that you allow there to be some flexibility between the storyteller and the children, um, which will obviously allow them to access the story more readily. So what do you think? What do you think the story was trying to tell us? What do we have to do? Be sensible. Be sensible, yes. And what else was the story trying to tell us, David? Be good. Be good. But how? How was the Samaritan a good person? What did the Samaritan do that um, made him a good person? Um, he helped the traveller. He did help the traveller. Did he know the traveller? Yeah. Did he know him? I don't think he did. No. I don't think he knew the traveller at all. And yet he bent down, didn't he, Jade? Yeah. And he helped him. And really, that is the message of the story, that we should help other people. And I think that's really important, isn't it? Now we need someone who's going to be the innkeeper. Who do you think we should choose? Mm. Should we have a girl? That'd be nice. Casey. Casey. Would you like to be the innkeeper, Casey? Excellent. I've got um, country and western waistcoat for you to wear. Here we go. Turn around, Casey. Put your sheet, your arms in. That's it. Ari has a significant place in the curriculum for a whole range there? of reasons. Imagine. The lesson that uh, took place with the reception class this morning showed some of them. It showed that it can involve children, if even a very young age, with uh, matters relating to beliefs 
and values in a digestible, attractive way. You know what the Samaritan said? Samaritan said to the innkeeper, he said, this is my friend who's been injured and I want you to look after him. And he gave him some money. Can you give us, pretend to give us some money? Give us some money. That's it, that's good. And he said, if you need any more money, I'll come back in a day or two and I'll pay some more. You're right, Case, you're gonna look after the, the poor traveler who's been injured? Fantastic. So he waved goodbye, wave goodbye to the innkeeper. Wave goodbye to Tommy. And then you can go back to where Inez and sit down. Well done. And that's the end of the story. Wasn't that a fantastic story? Wasn't it brilliant? Should we give all our actors a big clap? So well done. Fantastic. Well done. Kate. In Redbury schools and increasingly in schools across the country, stories like the parable of the Good Samaritan are used in our lessons where the, the class is diverse. We would encourage in exploring and responding for, for the children to bring their own backgrounds and their own insights in order to search out what the meaning is in the story for them. But there was one person in the group who was listening to Jesus said, but I don't understand, who is my neighbour? So Jesus said, everybody is our neighbour. So everybody, the person sitting next to you today is your neighbour. Can you look at them? Say, hi neighbour. Hi neighbour. So, excellent. So even though you might not always play with that person, if you see them in trouble, what will you do? You will, will you help them? Yeah. Yes, of yeah. course. I think that the session was very valuable for the children. I think it really um, improved their cooperation skills, the fact that they needed to work together. I think they understood the meaning of the story um, from a Christian perspective. I also feel that the next step would be to invite somebody from a different faith community to perhaps share a faith story and to examine the meaning behind that. Can you think of any times where you've helped somebody? Mm, my mum. And what happened with your mum? What? How did you have to help her? My mum, my mum fell over. Oh dear. And did you just run past? What did you do then? I helped her. And, and how did you help her? What did you do? Pick her up. You picked her up? What about in the playground, Amy? Have you ever helped anybody in the playground? Uh, when Charlotte pushed William over, um, I, saw, I heard him crying and I helped him up. Did you? What did you do then? Um, did you just run off and leave him? <gasps> what did you do then? Um, I played with him. Serena, can you think about a time when you've helped somebody? I helped my dad. And how did you help him? He fell over and I picked him up. He fell over and you picked him up. And then what did you do? I put him in a chair and got him some feet and a drink. Oh, that's so... And did it make him feel better? So how did you feel when you helped Daddy? Did you? Did you feel warm inside? Did it make you feel happy inside? That's lovely, isn't it? And how do you think he felt when you helped him? Happy. Yeah, I bet he was glad of you to help pull him up, wasn't he? Why do you think we should help people? Why is that important to help people? Because it's kind. It's kind, and it's really important to be kind, isn't it? I think in today's lesson, that message certainly came across and I know that at playtime today I had children coming up to me saying that they were looking for children who perhaps had slipped over who needed who needed a friend who needed somebody to help them